Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hi guys, hello, it's me again. Today I'd like to talk about a little bit about the Revolt 160EM brushless DC Outrunners. Finally, I got two motors in my lab. Oh man, I can tell you that was an Odyssey. Um, it took a while, uh, half a year. Uh, the one motor arrived within a couple of days. And the other one, uh, even though it was produced at the same time, shipped at the same time, uh, it took half a year finally to end up in my lab. <clears throat> so what I did, having just one motor available, was uh, performing some no-load tests. Uh, and uh, there are some good and some bad news uh, compared to the 160 Pro with which I started a couple of years ago. Maybe you can remember that. Um, the losses, the no-load losses are almost exactly the same, which is on the one hand good because the motor is bigger in size. The stator inside has a length of 60 millimeters instead of 45 millimeters. So one third additionally. Um, which makes clear that it might have some more losses, but on the other hand, those 160 EM come with 32 kV, whereas the 160 Pro has 50 kV. So they will run on a much lower speed, uh, so two thirds of the speed. And especially under no load, the majority of the losses are based on ventilation losses and uh, magnetization losses, hysteresis losses, and if it runs on a lower speed, I honestly expected less no load losses, but yeah, as I said, unfortunately, they are almost exactly the same. Okay, good. A anyway, um, meanwhile, the second motor has arrived and I was able to set up the old test bench again, consisting of a strong power supply. Now I can get along with just one power supply strong enough to cover all the losses. In the old days, I had to connect uh, some, some power supplies in series and parallel. Um, the power supply uh, delivers its energy to a DC link made of some huge capacitors. Then comes the controller, a Kelly controller for the motor. And the motor is that baby over here. Uh, mechanically connected to the generator and the generator finally uh, is connected to another Kelly controller which works then for regenerative braking feeding the energy back again into the DC link which means over here I can easily read out the current flow and together with the voltage the power put into the motor electrically and measuring the current flowing into the overall system, that tells me something about the, the overall losses. And assuming that the losses split equally into motor and generator, uh, if I subtract half of the losses from the electrical power put into the motor, that gives me a pretty clear idea on the mechanical power. Uh, what else do we have? Of course, we've got the Kelly monitor um, connected to the system. So for the generator, adjusting the brake, um, I can adjust more or less the torque. And on the other hand, I've got a potty over here uh, connected to the motor, the Kelly controller uh, responsible for the motor, which is the speed or the throttle. So maybe a short demonstration how it works. So that was almost under no load. Nothing uh, adjusted over here at the brake. So no torque applied at the generator and a little bit of throttle led to a speed of, maybe you saw that, uh, of 460 RPM and a no load current of 2.8 amps. So if we now adjust some more brake, usually I use values between 70 and 120. 
So for instance, let's adjust 100 roundabout and let's have a strong, massive uh, test. So adjusting lots of throttle to have 100 amps flowing. <laughs> So that was a short demonstration with 100 amps, 90 volts, so 9 kilowatts electrical power and uh, subtracting half of the overall losses, it leads around about to 7.5 kilowatts mechanical power over here between motor and generator. You saw probably the speed, so in that uh, example the motor was running on 1600 something RPM. Uh, so backwards you can calculate the torque, which was over here probably 40-45 newton meters. And over here you can read out the resistance of the temperature dependent resistor built into the stator windings in the reworld 160 EM. Uh, so the temperature naturally already increased a little bit, but 600 ohms is still something just like, I don't know, I can look it up, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So far, uh, it works. I was able to uh, have a continuous mechanical power of 10 kilowatts, which is good. But in that situation, the, the, the temperatures for rotor as well as for stator already reached uh, yeah, values where I've got some concerns if it's good for a longer time. And the difference to the 160 Pro Maybe you can remember my, my trouble with that one. I attached a radio fan and partly also those very small heat sinks, up to 48 of those small heat sinks at the rotor because the biggest problem at higher power ratings uh, was the temperature of the rotor and the stator never ever, so the stator windings never ever were a problem. And that's different over here, <clears throat> which also makes sense because due to the lower KV, they run on a lower speed. So as a tendency, you have higher, higher torques. And for the lower KV, you've got uh, thinner cables. But if you'd like to end up with a comparable electrical and mechanical power, uh, you need to put in same current and same current leads to R times I squared, more losses in the stator winding packages, which means over here, uh, the, the higher temperatures occur in the stator winding packages, which is, as I said once before, um, different to the 160 Pro and which is also good because cooling down the stator is probably a little easier than the rotor where you need to um, yeah, mechanically adapt something and to, to modify the motor beyond the design of, of the manufacturer. Because the 160 EM comes with a, an option for, where do we have it, for water cooling. And that will be the next step before installing the machines back in the Twizy with its dual drive unit, I will try to increase power to, uh, to, to the values the manufacturer um, uh, released. The 160M should be suitable for uh, continuous powers of 15 kilowatts, which is currently not possible with that setup without water cooling. And as soon as I've got the water cooling, I'm trying to perform some uh, tests with 15 kilowatts mechanical power continuously and also probably reaching 20 kilowatts for short time operation. And then it's time to reactivate the dual drive unit, which is partly disassembled currently, and then to put it back into the Twizy with the dual drive unit. So far, 
uh, probably a little bit unstructured, lots of talking, 10 minutes are over. But anyway, I hope you you enjoyed this video, you learned something and your, your the curiosity awakened again and um, I'm still alive and the project still goes on. So see you soon. Goodbye.